center of the Earth, right near the Terminator. Well, the astronauts or mission controller, someone has finally found the right switch, and we believe we do have color pictures finally, color pictures of the Earth. And uh, the orange spot to the right is uh, the North American continent. You can see basically the Sahara Desert, and above that the Mediterranean Sea. The rest of the world is pretty much a case of clouds. The solid cloud cover that's covered the North Pole and the most of Europe is still with us today. At this time, as we look at the Earth, we are 210,000 miles away. We've only got about 9,000 more miles to go to the moon. Uh, we're traveling approximately 2,500 miles an hour relative to the Earth. Also, in about 15 minutes, we will enter the shadow of the moon and make our major burn to enter lunar orbit in approximately three hours. And also, in about 15 minutes, we will enter the shadow of the moon and make our major burn to enter lunar orbit in approximately three hours. Uh, at this distance, the Earth looks slightly smaller than a tennis ball to us. That's a little bit larger than a golf ball. And I hope it shows up the same way in your screen. Uh, Dan, uh, and if they... Again, uh, af south of Africa. Go ahead, Charlie. Right, I was just going to uh, add that we can uh, see the uh, uh, northern part of Africa. It, uh, we had a bluish tinge to it at first, but now it's coming into a uh, sort of an orangish brown, and uh, we can see the uh, South Atlantic, and uh, and the uh, cloud covers uh, very well. It's, uh, the colors are uh, very good. Over. Uh, Roger, again, the, the Sahara Desert, the Atlas Mountains, Morocco, Libya, we can see from here. It is an orange, uh, a brownish orange. The nighttime, the Terminator has cut across the Suez Canal and most of Egypt and is now covering most of South Africa. I can see Spain. It is a greenish brown. It is completely contrast with respect to North Africa. Uh, however, you may have difficulty seeing it on your set due to resolution at this distance. That's Tom Stafford, Again, of course. You can see uh, Brazil, but it's covered mostly with clouds at this time. Stafford talking right, to Ken, Charles. Uh, we, uh, have a, we can see. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ken. Uh, Roger, at this, Roger, at this time, Apollo 10 is going through the preparation for the lunar orbit insertion burn. And uh, the next, after we lose contact from the Earth, the next time that we come around, we will to have contact with the Earth. We'll be at approximately a 60 mile by 170 mile orbit around the moon. Uh, right now, we cannot see the moon, even though it is rapidly accelerating towards us, towards it by its mass. Over. Uh, Roger, Tom. Uh, we copied that uh, very good description. Uh, we uh, have uh, difficulty seeing any landmass uh, in our uh, picture except for uh, North Africa, and we can see the Terminator cutting across Africa. Uh, Europe, the land masses of Europe are uh, just sort of fade into a bluish color. Uh, it looks like an ocean to us. Over. All right, uh, really the, the only major landmass we can see is exactly what you can see on your set there. And uh, that is uh, the North African continent. Most of Europe is covered by either high clouds or, or some scattered low clouds. It's very difficult for us to see it too. We'll give you a quick uh, shot on the interior now, and then we'll terminate uh, this pass. We'll go inside now. Bill Anders, who flew on Apollo 8, said that the Earth appears about eight times brighter from the moon than the moon does from the Earth. The Earth also appears larger than the moon, four times. I suppose simply because of the moons. Stafford saying we're going to have an inside tour quickly and then terminate this particular telecast. We expect that shortly after that they may go on again as they fall into the shadow of the moon, which will give us a look at the sun's corona effect, the sun glow in the atmosphere. All Apollo 10, Houston, you're uh, coming in on the black and white monitor now.
There is the Apollo 10 shield. Ken, we have the color now. Uh, the resolution on the 85 is, uh, is uh, I think, better than uh, most expected here. Uh, the sun is uh, uh, pretty bright in the background, uh, coming in through the, uh, I guess that's uh, the hatch window, uh, uh, side window, I guess it is. The, uh, the patch is uh, visible, but it's uh, pretty dark uh, due to the uh, background uh, uh, being so bright. They are then using the smaller Goldstone receiving antenna. We had hoped for pictures of the moon on the way out. There were none, of course, during Apollo 8. The astronauts said that uh, they kept their spacecraft in the thermal control mode the whole way and never did look out to see the moon. The problem with this mission has been that the angle between the sun and the moon as the astronauts have been on their way out has been so small that uh, the sun's light would actually be too bright for the television camera to be looking almost directly into the sun. Do you read over? Go ahead, Charlie. Uh, Roger, I uh, thought we'd lost voice there for a moment. Uh, you're coming in five by now. We got uh, your arm patch now that's uh, very... Uh, uh, dim uh, at uh, this setting. We had uh, Gene's uh, smiling face there for a minute with, uh, along with the patch. Uh, the, the, uh, the flag is uh, coming in a little bit better now. However, it's still uh, pretty dark due to the, uh, the bright background. Uh, that's a lot better there, Ken. Over. It's Gene Cernan. Uh, there, we have a good uh, view now. Now we can see uh, Gene again. Uh, it is. First day there were interior television we pictures. We see you waving, uh, Gene. We, uh, Barbara's in the viewing room. She says hi. <laughs> I was about to say that the first day there were interior television pi pictures, none of the television networks uh, was ready. And as a result, uh, the pictures came back to Earth but didn't get out. Barbara Cernan knew right that here, uh, her husband was on television and frantically turned dials and couldn't find him. So today she wasn't going to take any chances. She went inside Mission Control to be sure she saw him. We see you uh, trying uh, uh, hard on the thing. Uh, it looks like the uh, the uh, ALC is uh, averaging out, and uh, the background looks uh, real good. The spacecraft back along the hatch. Uh, uh, Tom's hand is uh, covering his window is uh, real clear. His face is uh, dark though. Over. Uh, that's those whiskers there, Charlie. I see. Thank you very much, uh, John. That wasn't quite the call. That's called as a 72 hour shadow, Charlie. Yes, sir. Apollo 10, uh, Houston, we now have the 210 at uh, Goldstone. Uh, the uh, granularity and the resolution is a, a heck of a lot better here. At, uh, you're coming in real great. Over. Okay. There's our overhead hatch window there. Ken, uh, Houston, we see some uh, specks on your uh, hatch window. Could you comment on those? Yeah, they come from uh, the dumps that we're making overboard as we progress along. I don't think any of it is due to the thruster firing, Charlie. Right. Houston, the, uh, the hatch window is uh, phenomenally clear. There's what appear to be a few dust particles on the outside, maybe a couple of smear 
Patriots on the inside. Uh, the uh, the right hand uh, window has got a little bit of a smear on the outside, not necessarily particles, but just a general smear. And the uh, left uh, the left side window has got some definite particles uh, lashed across it. You'll remember that the fogging problem plagued early Apollo flights. By changing the sealant in the windows, they seem to have taken care of that. Yeah, we'll show you the navigator down the LAB. Uh, Roger, Tim, we have uh, no complaints at all. It's a uh, pretty good show. You get the feeling that television is as important to the astronauts as it is to yeah, us, perhaps more important. Yeah, because he gets all the good light down there. Right, uh, there's old John, friendly face. <laughs> John's pointing right now at the uh, sextant and a telescope, which are our navigation means to get home and uh, hopefully to do part of the rendezvous. Yeah, this is the best, this is the best working part of the whole machine. It's really working beautiful now. Got a good operator. They had trouble with those instruments on earlier flights, too. I think we can can get the feeling of the isolation of space. the uh, sextant and on the right-hand side of the telescope. Oh, Roger. Thank you much, Dan. We see it. You know, once you lose that thing in here and you have to look for it for about 20 minutes, you find a way not to lose it again. Well, it wasn't quite 20 minutes, but it sure was a scramble going for it, I'll tell you that. Uh, Roger, we copy. We have you uh, entering the uh, lunar penumbra at this time. Uh, do you notice uh, the sun setting at all, over? I can't see the sun right now, Charlie. Roger, we're not in the right attitude to see it. The dark side of the moon is facing the astronauts. The sun is beyond it. As a result, they're not able to see the sun, nor are they able to see the moon. Can't get a picture of the sun, and we can see if there's any solar corona, we'll uh, give it a quick shot. Uh, Roger, uh, uh, Jack is estimating you'll have about 30 seconds only, over.